and it's the correct. same here. That's correct. Okay. Um, and as, as far as the yeah. detail regarding the transfer, um, yeah. I just want to make sure that the trustees understand that the approval of the appropriation ordinance is not an implicit approval of all of the expenditures that are listed in here. Each month, you have to approve the bills and salaries. And by doing that, you're approving us to pay all of those bills. Um, any of the activities that would be listed, for example, in the reserve fund section, section six, um, all of those items are derived from our resolution amending a plan um, that we approved at the June meeting. Um, all those capital improvement projects would have plans associated with them. Uh, there may be bid projects that would be associated with that. Um, so there would be other instruments for, for which you would have to go through an approval process and then expenditures that would be associated with that. So just because it's listed in here doesn't mean that you are getting pre-approval for those projects. It merely allows us the opportunity to appropriate those funds should the opportunity arise for us to do so. And the same is also true of, of the transfer. We have not received our audited financials yet, and we're not going to receive the audit until this fall. Um, so come the fall, we'll know what our total revenues and expenditures were um, per the audit uh, for fiscal year 1819. And at that time, we'll determine what, what actually would be eligible for transfer. And then we could make that decision at that time via a separate ordinance. So this ordinance, even though there is a, a line item for a transfer in there, does not imply that or, or give pre-approval um, or implicit consent for us to go forward with that transfer. Are there any other questions? I have one other comment, and that is that in my 35 years on this board, I can count the number of times that residents came forward with comments at the public hearing on one hand. Generally speaking, People of this community are supportive of the library services they receive. They take the time to come to a hearing when they're not supportive of something. And generally speaking, we have not had those kinds of questions. The last time we did was principally related to our rate referendum in 2001. Okay, thank you. Mo can you take the roll call now? Okay. Uh, Does everyone know what the motion is? You want to repeat it? Okay. Yeah. The motion that's been moved and seconded is to approve the 2019-20-20-193 annual budget and appropriation ordinance for library purposes for the fiscal year 2019 and 20 and certificates of estimate of revenue. Okay. <clears throat> Trustee Riddle. Nay. Trustee Johnson. No. Trustee Rogers. Yes. Trustee Wolf. Yes. Trustee McDonald. Yes. Trustee Barshes. Yes. Trustee Fishman. Yes. Okay. Thank you. We now have the director's report. Okay. Thank you. Discussion. All right. So behind tab six, you will find my report for the month. Um, and there are just a couple items that I'd like to highlight. Um, Thank you. Attached to the director's report this month, you'll find a 10-page summary of our strategic plan um, goal progress for this past fiscal year. I can get into that here in a moment. Um, I want to just focus on the month of uh, July 1st. So um, within the current fiscal year of 1920, um, we continue progress on the strategic plan. Um, I want to call your attention to what the staff and I are really excited about, and that's our library of things. There are already 91 different items that are in our library of things. Um, this collection is listed on the website, and you can see a number of the resources that are available there. Um, and it ranges from iPads to magnifying glasses to various robots. Um, and uh, kilowatt meters, all, all kinds of things, including telescopes is one of our more recent uh, resources, and mobile hotspots, um, which are popular with folks when they're going on vacation. They can take their, their Wi-Fi connection with them. Um, so we're excited about the success of the Library of Things, and we will continue to, um, to grow that collection uh, for the plan. Um, we're also in an effort to try to make our collections more accessible, uh, beginning in September, all of our periodicals collection will be barcoded. Historically, um, 
those items have not been eligible for immediate circulation um, to patrons. They have to be taken to the circulation desk, so there's no self-service option with those. Um, but by barcoding those collections, we'll make them easier to inventory, to track those, and to improve the circulation of those collections. So it's, it's quite an undertaking to go through that process of barcoding, um, and we're excited to be offering that service now. Um, I wanted to also call your attention to, um, at the bottom of page two and, and top of page three, uh, I've got three news items in there that relate to the way that libraries provision service. And this is maybe a matter for advocacy, but I wanted to bring this forward to you all just so that you're generally aware of, of what the conditions are with publishing um, and the relationships that the library has with some of our vendors. Um, so lynda.com, you may all know as a, um, an online resource that allows um, individuals to train themselves in how to use various software programs um, or become or to teach oneself something a programming language or um, how to use Microsoft's products etc there's a number of, of learning resources that are affiliated with Linda it's a very popular resource and one of the few that our patrons actually ask for by name um, because that service was purchased by LinkedIn the popular social networking um, platform a couple of years ago they're changing their service model, and that service model, instead of being based off of your library card, will now have a contingency associated with it where you have to register as an individual user with the LinkedIn um, website in order to, to provision their services, even though the library is paying for um, that service. It gives current concern to libraries as an example in, in this instance because um, certain private information that the library would not make publicly available is, is now being given directly to these vendors. Um, the library would never have given off library card numbers to, um, to other to vendors regarding their services, but now that individual accounts need to be created, it, it is a concern for privacy for our patrons. Um, we are taking a proactive stance on this and notifying all of the users that we have that take advantage of this service. Um, that this is something that they're going to, that's a contingency of using that project uh, project product going forward. Um, however, we, we see this as a trend. This is quite possible, possibly something that could come forward with other vendors. Um, we're seeing this also with LexisNexis, as I mentioned in the next paragraph. And um, even the possibility of this happening with some of our digital publishers. Uh, at the top of page three, you'll see a reference to um, some action that's been taken by ALA and locally with the Illinois Library Association um, denouncing what Macmillan Publishing is doing with their ebook lending model. Essentially, they've placed an embargo on all the titles that they're offering to libraries. Um, this is not an uncommon thing. We've experienced this, say, for example, with Disney and Warner Brothers with their DVDs, where they would hold back access to those materials so we couldn't provide them immediately to our patrons. They want to give uh, the public an opportunity to buy those resources first before they can rent them from the library. They would typically make us wait three weeks before we could purchase those and make them available to the public. Well, Macmillan is kind of taking another step in this direction with e-resources, and they're saying that we can only buy one copy of a title to make that available. Um, one of the values of, of providing e-content to our patrons is the immediate accessibility of those resources. So this is a trend that we're really watching closely and is, is kind of somewhat discouraging. We're, we're seeing that publishers are kind of lashing out at the library industry here. Um, a lot of authors have, have rushed to libraries' defenses and saying that libraries are one of the best resources for promoting and advocating for um, collections and, and library purchases and even just general public purchasing the resources. So in any event, it's just something that we want to watch and it's something I want to make you all aware of. And as our advocacy committee starts to meet, um, these are some of the things that we may be asking um, that committee to take note of and maybe um, endorse um, either a letter to these publishers or whatnot saying, hey, this is affecting our patrons and the type of service that we're trying to provide. Um, may, yeah. may I say something? Um, um, I don't know if you're aware of it, but in the Chicago Tribune, I believe on this past Sunday, there was an article by an, an author about how, how objecting to this, to this. Did you send it? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And, and ma you know, made the comment that if you're a small city in a library in Vermont, you know, one rental is really a lot easier to manage than if we're in a place like Wilmette or even a bigger library where, where obviously you've you're, you're, you're got a lot, of, lot more demand for the same title. So as it stands right now, um, this is just one of, of many many publishers, um, probably one of the big six, though, so it is it could potentially affect access to some of our collections. Um, you know, it, anecdotally, um, uh, our, our one book title this last year had very strong circulation digitally. If patrons um, really preferred to read that on their Kindle or whatever their device is, 
um, they would have had to wait an inordinate amount of time and wouldn't have been able to read it before we had that discussion. So again, it's just something that could ultimately affect the way that we provision service going forward, and we just want to study that trend. Should we, I mean, do you suggest that we join the ILA and the ALA as a board and, you know, pass a resolution or send our own letter to them too? I don't know that we need to take that specific action in this instance right now. I think, you know, ILA is acting on behalf of all libraries in the state, so I think it's pretty strong that ILA is doing that and ALA has, has done it as well. It's good to see that advocacy. They're not making a direct call for us, although they are recommending that, you know, if we if we feel very strongly about it that we could. At this time, I don't know that it's it's immediately necessary. If it's a trend that continues, yes, I would say that that would be something that we would want to take some action on. Could we ever put on the website current actions and a link that patrons could go and bombard the publishers? Right. <laughs> it's, it's true that we could take that action, and we do watch the social media feeds of a lot of our peer libraries, mm -hmm. and some of them that are a little bit more political and advocacy-oriented were posting content like this. Oak Park is an example of one that really took a stand and, mm -hmm. and said, hey, if you're angry about this, you know, let the publisher know. Um, we could take that tack. We haven't used our social media or our website for that. I think it would be helpful because a lot of times Patreon says, well, I can never get, and I don't think they understand right. why they can't get the electronic books as quickly as they can get some others and that the library is holding up on it. And I think that might be helpful, but we'll talk about it later. I think okay. that makes sense. I agree, because I think people right, will be frustrated, and so there needs to be, I think, a public education of it's not us. And, and just they, cite some neutral certainly. articles that they can go out to with a link. Okay. All right, so on to more positive news. Mm -hmm. um, on, uh, on August 1st, we hosted our annual summer reading club picnic, and we happened to combine that with a celebration for our outdoor renovation project, um, the launch of our lawn. Um, we had over 180 attendees the e that evening for um, Ralph's World. Uh, Ralph Covert was our Grammy-winning um, performer that evening. He got the, the kids running around, and we had a wonderful time. Um, Homer's provided ice cream. They, they gave out 296 Sundays. Oh, wow. <laughs> so some people went back for seconds. <laughs> um, the numbers don't. <laughs> but a fun time was had by all, and, and um, I, a, a number of you attended as well, and so we're glad that you were all there to help us celebrate. Um, I also wanted to point out under technology in our report here, um, we are making our first foray into 3D printing after a long and deliberate um, process of study. Um, we are going to be launching our first 3D printer this fall. We've, we've made our selection and uh, we're working out our procedures and um, as soon as the equipment arrives, we'll proceed with getting everyone trained on how to use that. Um, our Every, Everyone Makes program series um, has a, a column in uh, the next newsletter that you should be receiving in the next week and that will give more information about the programming that we've got that's, got that's associated with that. So we're excited about that. Um, and um, under building, we have, we are proud to announce that our newest book drop um, will be, is installed at the CTA Purple Line Linden Station. After much delay, it is there, and um, we are officially celebrating the launch of the book drop tomorrow. Um, so at 2 p.m. we're going to have um, a, a ceremonial ribbon cutting event with officials from CTA, library board and staff, and um, our patron who recommended this service um, a couple years ago, um, Dr. Richard Sobel, as a local author. Um, he, he thought this would be a great resource. Um, he lives in the area and has taken advantage of that, and he will also be on hand for the event. Oh, good. And he will deposit his book in the book drop. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen it. it. It's You can't miss the purple. It's, it's wonderful. Colorful. You know, it's, <laughs> it's beautiful. Yeah. Um, so that same branding that you're seeing on the drops around town, so at mm -hmm. Plaza, at Linden, and at the Community Resource Center, um, that same branding is going to be applied to the three book drops that are in our parking lot. And that Great. will be taking place later this fall as well. So they'll all get a nice refresh. Yeah. Um, okay, so that concludes my, my monthly report. Do you have any questions about any of the content in, the, in that report? No. All right, so I can give you an, an overview now of our fiscal year 1819 strategic plan goal progress. Um, there's a couple items on here that I want to highlight. It's a long report, so I'm not going to go over everything, um, but I'll certainly take some questions from you as well. Um, 
our first initiative has really been to turn outward um, and to do more with relation to our community engagement, advocacy, and outreach. And as such, um, our Youth Services Department launched a preschool and STEM kit delivery program this past year that has been tremendously successful. Um, Children's Librarian Ruth Bell delivered um, almost 1,500 books and 42 STEM kits to nine preschools over this past nine-month period, and our engagement has been exceptional as a result of that partnership with those agencies. So we're really excited about that and want to continue to do that in the next year. Um, on a related note, um, our Youth Services Librarian Alice Joseph visits all schools in our district and um, she does that throughout the course of May and June to promote the Summer Reading Club program. And as such, um, we've seen a really high engagement through our Summer Reading Club this past summer. Um, our numbers are not yet official because the program grow goes through the month of August. So at our September meeting, I'm inviting um, our Youth Services Manager, Andrea Johnson, to come and deliver a report about our, our Summer Reading program. So I will not steal her thunder and say much more about that. We'll have our official numbers come September for that. Um, we did establish our community engagement committee in February of this year, and so there's a, a lot of action that's been related to that group, and those reports are included um, in the director's report monthly now. Um, so there are individual reports about the various actions that staff are taking in turning outward in the community. Um, that committee was, as I said, established in February, and um, we're piloting um, a program to 